Well, I know that I believe his name was Nick, 28, already commented on Lou Reed's death. But Adam, did you want to add anything to that? No, Lou Reed was one of the many guys that I had to pretend to be into. So I wouldn't people wouldn't know I was Squaresville. You know what I mean? Because when all the cool people were like, "Oh, Lou Reed, man!" Lou, oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, Reed, Reed, yeah. Oh yeah. You like Lou Reed? Oh, with uh, the uh, shit denim underground. No, no, I, I know you like his established stuff with the velvet underground. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I'm talking I'm about Hippo Lou Reed's those. early stuff. Man. Oh, underground down, shit. No, I, and I'm not listening to Radiohead. It's almost all Lou Reed. Oh yeah. Right, has so mainstream. Right. I'm talking about like Lou Reed's underground shit that he did in his sleep that no one's ever heard. Mm. You ever heard that? It's good mm. stuff, man. Mm. Yeah, he uh, served as the lead vocalist for the Dead Kennedys later. Yes, so, so, so I was right. You were you were right. Two two thousand one to uh, two thousand three. So Lou Reed will be missed, mm. and the Dead Kennedys are going to find a new. Oh no, wait a minute. I may be combining two two stories here. Jonathan McEwen, were you a Lou Reed fan? Lou Reed, take a walk on the wild side. Lou Reed, yes, that's a good <laughs> that guy. That's a good track. Nailed gotta it. say, I I don't. But see, so my whole thing with Lou Reed is, um, I have him. He's in my. There's a few guys. Uh, there's him, and there's like Frank Zappa, mm-hmm. where it's sacrilege to go. Listen, I don't. I've heard titties and beer, and then they would go, oh no 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 no, that's not Frank Zappa. And then they play you some other Frank Zappa song, and you go, well, this one sucks too. Yeah. And they go, yeah yeah, but you don't know about music. Has anyone yeah, not appreciating them is not an option? Did Lou Reed have great pipes? Has anyone united hipsters more than Lou Reed? No, no. But I think he has it's... become a celeb cause celeb for them. He's their aides, mm. which is they oh, wow. they made a Lou Reed's quilt. What I'm well, I think a lot of bands that you probably like or definitely have heard of at least would Velvet Underground are what you you could trace them back to Velvet Underground. Right. And to be to be fair to me, I never sat down and listened to a marathon of Frank Zappa or a marathon of Lou Reed. That being said, I've heard some of what they've had to offer and never really enjoyed it and Splendid. don't quite get it. But I do think if he was from Iowa, we wouldn't be talking quite as much about it. I think there's a hipster – and I, I don't know I, – I sometimes – the, sometimes the talent matches the buzz. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This, you think he's perhaps overrated? I sh- perhaps I shouldn't do – I should back out of the eulogy right now. <laughs> I'm just going to call in surprised they out. chose you given your feelings about him. Do you think uh, his buzz matched his talent? No, or his drapes? No. Yeah. Not – no. Now, then there were guys like Warren Zevon who I did like some of their – some of Warren's songs. But again – I don't. I don't know where the genius part kicks in, uh, but for me, I like John Hyatt, and in you know, John doesn't have a great traditional voice, but Lou Reed, I felt like he was talking. <laughs> I don't know what he was. People liked his lyrics a lot as well. I liked his lyrics, but all right, well, I got John and Hyatt the sort for of that. inventiveness of the, okay. the playing. All right, but also in terms of people who are famous who died, mm. Hal Needham. Mm. We just had him in two years ago. Now he's going to be missed. He was 82 and he died of cancer. Yeah. Hal uh, did all those like smoking the bandit and all those cannonball, cannonball run. runs and maybe even Hooper and all Stunt that. Driver. St- stunts Unlimited. Stunts everything and then just sort of got behind the camera and didn't really have much of a script. But he had Burt Reynolds and that was uh, good enough. But old school and as somebody sent me, I was saying this. When uh, Smoking Joe Frazier died, son of a sharecropper, not going to hear that. Mm. You know, in years from now, it's going to be son of a computer software designer. So it doesn't sound romantic. Son of an IT specialist. Right. Son of a sharecropper. Now, that sounds like something. That's a song. Mm -hmm. File sharer. (laughs) (laughs) Son of an uploader. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't sound romantic. Well, Hal's going to be missed. That's for damn sure. Now, any guy named Hal is going to be missed by me. Yeah. What, is that Harold? Enough... Yeah, I don't know Harold. what it is, but there's not enough Hal. Hal need him. Hello, Yeah, Hal. that guy's legendary. Now, all right. <sighs> Give it to me on Twitter. But now, what's the difference between a sharecropper and just a farmer? Well, first off, I didn't know you could be a white sharecropper. So, so Hal's dad was breaking down color barriers for white people way back in the teens and 20s, you know, before it was popular. 
I would like to know the difference too. I feel like it's you share the I, profits the, with your with the farmer your... is you own the farm. Sharecroppers, like I, I think it's the difference. I'll put it in terms you can understand. You know, at the hair salon, sure. Oh, like you're renting your station. I think you just rent a chair. Oh, okay, so you're like, I'll take this bush, this row, this hedgerow. You, you rent your chair, yeah. and then when you, however much you make from that chair, you got to pay out the guy who's has the lease on the place. Right. And then don't you hate it when they push you to sell their Aveda products? Oh, and those Asian nail cunts always coming around. And that stuff smells. Yeah. And it's not ventilated. No. And you, why do you have to have the, have the chair closest to their station? It's right. Noxious. And then you're taking, you're, you're going to shampoo a client. Right. And it's right by the nail dust. And that can't be good. Yeah. Can I ask this? And you guys can work, work out chair cropper and see if that's an that's, uh, apt analogy. The water... That comes out of that retractable hose with the head thing that's indented. Yes. Which, by the way, never feels good on your neck. No, and it always comes out at terminal velocity. <laughs> it's always, and it always catches the person off guard. Mm-hmm. Where they pull, it's a it's a weird plunger thing. You can push things down in a gingerly fashion. You can turn them sort of gingerly, but you can't pull them up, evidently, because it's always like it goes, pop, and then it gets sort of sprang all over the place, and the person goes, like whoa, fire, whoa, whoa, like whoa, 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 and then she goes, woo, too hot, too hot, and it's like, sweetie, did they just air you, airlift you into the salon earlier this morning, or have you worked at the same fucking dump for 12 years, and why are you so surprised by this device used twice a day? Now, when yes. they say temperature good for you, yeah, what do you usually do it on say? Their, I, I will say this. There is no more simpler pleasure than having someone wash your hair. Jonathan, you have a beautiful head over there. It's quite that a mane. Must be, Thank you. That must it, – it, 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 I, I, now, under the, uh, the category of things that I never, ever do but cost under $10 is get my hair washed. That head in you that – You should go to a blow-dry bar. I should go to a blow-dry bar. Blow-dry bar. Oh, that's not a gay thing? No. And oh, they don't well, then I'm in. <laughs> now I'm in. Yeah. You can just go and get... I, I've actually never done I it. I never... But I would always they, just cover my ass and run as fast as I could right past it. I didn't even know that you yeah, could go in. No need. I, I had a serious lean. Just eyes. You, just, le- you leaned backwards. That's how, I, that's I, how I, scary just, you're d- 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 ah! And I just <laughs> ran right past it, screaming as loud as I could. And I realized like, screaming, not a great technique. Probably not. No, you no. attract more attention. Uh, I like yeah. to go to a blow dry bar. Yeah, they just—I think they just wash your hair and then blow it dry. They, you can get yourself styled. I like the sink that's carved out for your neck. I like the leaning back into the chair. I like. Don't when, look at me like I'm supposed to understand uh, what you're talking I, about. I like—I I don't like the part where the, the thing's out of control. Mm-hmm. There's always way too much psi in that thing. Just poof, whoosh, and then I like the part where she sprang it on her hand, trying to trying to dial in, but you can right. feel a little bit of it. It's like sort on of your like, neck. A, like a new mother testing the bottle, mm-hmm, the formula, temp- temperature mm-hmm. on her wrist, mm-hmm. like where you rubbed your tampon earlier. <laughs> And yes. they test it out, and then they ask you, is this too warm? But, you know, it feels good. And then yeah. they do that thing. And then when they start the lather part, that's good. I, yeah. It's really nice. For- that's when the client starts talking, usually. Mm-hmm. They start telling you everything. Yeah, that's anything. when they open up. Do you wash hair? Well, or cut? you know, mom is a cosmetologist. I was her stunt boy oh, in really? school, you know. He was the uh-huh. Hal Needham of hair so my hair, is, my hair is curly today. Yeah, because of an accident at school, at her school. You went to her school. <gasps> Did you get a permanent perm? Yeah, just we used to be bowl cut guy, really perfect bowl cut, real nice. Yeah, and curly from the perm on, mm. perm on curly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I used to know a lot of kids that got the bowl cut. Hair therapy. Ooh. Yeah, I had yeah. a. You know, George and I aren't really getting along. I had one of my. I That's had what of, happens. My mom's friend Pat claimed to have cut hair, but not so good. But when you're a kid, who gives a fuck? Yeah, the surfer cut, the razor cut, permanent. Why? Uh, oh, what do I know? You know, my thing is, why don't women today just fucking take 10 minutes and learn how to work that buzzer? Like, if you have a son, you just put the number three on, and you just fucking buzz it off. You don't have to do any take him down, or he needs a whatever. You just put him in the backyard, you put him on a stool, you put, like, a throw rug around his neck, and you just buzz it down to whatever, and who the hell cares what you look like? You're fucking five. Are you I getting laid? I recently gave myself a trim myself, because I thought, how hard can this be? I've watched them do it a thousand times, but before I did it, I actually went from how hard can this be to thinking... Uh oh! What am I going to do when I'm so good at cutting hair that all my friends want me to cut theirs and I can't fit into my schedule? I never should have gone down this road. Thankfully, I'm not very good, so mm-hmm. that's not going to happen. But at happen. least you can get to the end of your hair. I can't get to the 
back yeah, part of me. That's true. You need your mom to learn. A sharecropper is someone who farms the land that isn't theirs in exchange for giving part of each harvest to the landowner. All right. The same same thing as the chair at the beauty salon. Exactly. All right. Anyway, he'll be missed. Yeah. So I'm going to walk away knowing that Lou Rawls' dad was a Me. sharecropper. <clears throat> hmm? Bingo. Bingo. Yep. Move forward. <laughs> Next story. It'll I be just missed. Think I, I'm just I'm stuck on the fact that Jonathan McEwen has a lot of cosmetology cosmetology knowledge. Mm-hmm. What are the chances? I'd say Hair pretty therapy. good by looking at him. Hair yeah. therapy. Yeah. Right. Is that what your mom does? Well, yeah. You know, you sit in the chair. They're touching your ears, your head, your ooh. You know, and then they f- start telling you everything. Every, yeah. More. You, you know, this, the 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 hairdresser usually knows more about the client than their spouse. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's pretty interesting. Mm. Yeah. I had a uncomfortable conversation with my hair guy. If you can call him that, you're so honest. Twelve dollars. <laughs> Did you tell him everything? I sat facing a, a, a direction I never faced before, and then I had this following exchange. The, it's the uh, "I'm not going to let it go" conversation that I have with people. You know, where I go. I'm not familiar with that conversation. You do this a lot. Here's how it goes. <laughs> I've been Allison, to this. Maintain yourself. I've been to this place. Well, listen. Now, hold on a second. Everyone thinks I'm a douchebag, but if you bring something up and then someone goes, no, that's not. Whether it's a piece of trivia or who played in the World Series or whatever, and you go, no, that's not that way. And you go, I think it is. And they go, no, it's not. Then it it's, turns out to g- be. it's game on. You're allowed to go find out the information you and bring to, it back. You are compelled to. I paid Jimmy Kimmel like $5,000 once. Or maybe I bought him a set of golf clubs or something. But I, you know, it was like even before. I said, I don't know why we had an over-under on uh, Steve Yeager, the uh, ex-Dodger great catcher, hitting more than, you know, 18 home runs in a year or something like that. But he never did. And Jimmy went and fucking, we argued for a long time. They went and found it. That's what guys do. I went into this salon that I've been to for the last eight years, and I faced another direction. I, I instead of having uh, the long bank of chairs and facing this way, I turned my back to that way and f- went and sat in the single one facing the other way. And the guy said, uh, I said, huh, first time I've ever faced this way. And the guy said, last time I cut your hair, you face this way. Oh, no. And I said, no, I didn't. And he said, this is the only way I cut people's hair. This is my station. And I said, I would not say it if this was the second time. This is the first time. I sat in a room today where the guy, the line producer, or whatever, was going. She paid him a hundred and uh, she paid him one hundred ninety-seven. The contract one hundred ninety-seven, uh, one hundred ninety-four thousand dollars. She uh, overpaid him by two hundred fifty-four thousand. The original contract was for one ninety-four. She paid him two fifty-four. I said, I think she paid him one ninety-seven. He was like, uh, I just read the thing, and I was like, I think it was one ninety-seven. I had like ten people in the room with me go. What are you talking about? We're all there moving on. And, and it was right. I got stuck on my this number. But when you know something and you voice it and he says no, then you got to follow it up. And that's what I do. It's fair, but it's a two-way street. So how did you prove, though, that you have never sat facing that direction before? That is unprovable. I just said, take my word for it. I've been in this place a thousand times and I've never faced this direction. And that's why I'm saying it. By the way, it's at the same time when you say no mayo and then they give you extra mayo and you go, I said no mayo. And they go, oh, no, you said extra mayo. And you go, (laughs) believe me, I would not tell you to pile on the stuff I don't like in in an excess amount. Like this is you have the vested interest. Right. I'm bringing this up for a reason. Okay, sorry. 